that card is also it has that information about being an organ donor i know that in nigeria people are like oh my god i can't give my <laughs> organs when but when you die you're dead you, you don't need it yes. you don't need it anymore <laughs> and the same thing applies to blood if you give blood it regenerates itself and it comes back what are we doing to ensure that people are able to carry that card as a badge of honor and be able to show uh, you've, you've got one <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay okay so see that's my card all right that's indeed you do have with Twitter. oh yeah 16th one and yeah, that was the last one i was recorded okay the 12th, yeah. 12th of uh April. 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 So, so yesterday's one has not been not recorded. recorded and one was yes. Recording, so. See? Okay. So that Lagos means State Blood Transfusion Service. Yes. See why Shogo is a hero now. <laughs> <laughs> See why Shogo is he a hero. Carries his blood donation card. Yes. So mm. I I guess everybody and different organizations should encourage it too. What are we doing to get the private sector to encourage their staff? to donate blood because at some point or the other, if I don't need it, my family will need it. Some of us are married with wives who are going to have babies. Some of us have children who might fall oh, ill. Yeah. Mm. And there are accidents left, right and center every day on Okada, on buses, in, in private cars. So why can't we get them, everybody, to be Hello, at, We have some, some of them who are partnering with us. But we can only say that they can do more. Mm. Private organizations, institutions, so that they can do more in terms of creating awareness in the public. And also, like you actually said, it has it stands so many things to benefit from getting these cards. Mm. And you can see, you know his blood group, mm. his genotype, uh, you will know that he's free from other transfusion transmissible diseases. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have a caller on the line. Uh, Good morning. Please go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Morning, Cardi. Coming from Lagos Island. I want to contribute to little about what the man in suit said. Now, I was once a victim, which some times ago my wife gave back to baby girl fifty years, and in the course of that, the blood that was given to my wife hospital at Onikon Health Center. I paid for it. So I want to disagree with him with the comment he made now that the blood that people are donating to me, people don't pay for it. Uh, so how much did you pay, Kaede? Hello? How much did you pay? I paid $7,000 for it. And at how the Medical much? Health Center. Seven? In Lagos Island. Which hospital? Lagos Island Hospital or Nikon Health, Health Center? Center in Lagos Island. Or Nikon Health yeah. Center. Did you say seven thousand? Hello. Did you say seven thousand? I said seven thousand. As in seven, seven thousand naira. Seven thousand. Okay. Okay, uh, Kadi, thank you very much. Uh, will that be a case of underhand tactics by some officials of the hospital mm -hmm. that the government is not aware of? No, I think when you donate blood, it passes through a process. When you donate voluntarily, it passes through a process. Mm -hmm. They will have to screen it for the blood transmission, transmissible diseases mm -hmm. that involve HIV screening. Mm -hmm. Hepatitis B and Hepatitis T mm. and syphilis. So having done that, when you need it, you will be made to pay some amount. To cover the cost co of the screening. Cost, because you have to look at the amount you spend on screening. It's more than what we ask them to pay. Well, you didn't explain mm. that earlier. So. Okay, so That's sometimes you have you to pay for the blood. Yes, when you come for the grouping and cross-matching to ensure that the blood we are giving out is compatible mm -hmm. with the person that will receive the blood. Mm -hmm. So we try to explain this to the relatives. Mm -hmm. And they pay and they give them receipt. So if that one was not explained to Mr. Cowdy, let him go there and let them be informed. 
But as a voluntary blood donor, if you do not regularly and you hold on to your card, if you are ready for all you need to do at any point in time, you can show your card, you will be exempted from donating. So how do you allay the fears of those who think that in the course of donating blood, oh my gosh, I, if I donate blood, I might have AIDS. They might use the wrong set of needles. They mm -hmm. might do this or do that. How do you allay their fears to make them feel confident enough to want to go back every time? Blood donation is an aseptic procedure. I want to let them know that in Lagos State, the blood they donate is free and the process is a clean one. And through that process, when, when the first of all come from the relative, the first of all screen them. I beg your pardon, Dr. Lori. We have another caller on the line. Good morning, Emeka. Hello? Go on, Emeka. Make your point quickly. Hello, good morning. Please can go ahead. Me? We can hear you loud and clear, Mika. Please go ahead and make your point. Okay. Um, what uh, that young man is saying there is not the truth. My wife gave birth at the uh, General Hospital, Bagada, here. We are meant to donate blood. We are forced to donate blood, which I did. So they said if you donate blood, that your wife may be in need, but if she's not in need, any other person can use it. So I understood what they were saying. So we were meant to donate, we donated blood. So when my wife now needed blood, when she was about to deliver, they asked me to pay. And I told them that I donated blood. How can I pay again? They said that is the, that you have to pay some amount of money. I was meant to pay 4,500 naira. That was on October this year. 4,500. Eventually, that blood was not used. Because my, and the cost of delivery, she, she did not, they did not require the blood. <laughs> she has to, do, she has to prepare blood, she has to pay, so that if she needs it, it will be used for her. So she did not use the blood. And I asked them, since she did not use the blood, I was not refunded the money. They said it, that the money is paid as done. So I was not refunded the money. One, I donated blood. Two, you understand? I paid for a blood and I donated blood. <laughs> It's not like the one you're saying is not how it happens. If you don't need blood, you pay for the blood again. After paying for the blood, if, if the blood is wrong, you will not be refunded. So they discourage us from donating. I cannot go and donate voluntarily. Because when I donate, some other person that will need to use the blood will have to pay for it. Okay. Uh, uh, I uh, think uh, yeah, thank you very much, Amika. Uh, doctor, how do you respond to that? Because if the practice, in an organization like Channels, I'll use Channels as an example, if you don't have a procedure in place that enables people to have an understanding, you are donating blood, this is why. Uh, if you need blood or your wife needs blood, this is what will happen. One, you will need to, uh, we will get it for you. Two, we will need to do the screening. Three, you will pay not for the blood because 4,500 does not buy you blood. It buys you the process of screening, uh, screening and testing it. Mm. Why are there no procedures in place? Or maybe those procedures are not being explained to people. Yes, they explain all this procedure to them. But in most cases, when they come as emergency situation, it's, we have such an issue. But his worry is about re refunding the fees that she, he had paid. Mm. I think it will be resolved and they will refund him money. But they've just told him that um, he's not going to get anything back. The money is no, gone. No, no, no. That's what he said. <laughs> no, that's what he said. That's okay. what he said. <laughs> well, I, I think that will be resolved. It's, so it, it's, it's really not an issue. How it's, it's will they be resolved? Would you say that he can come to you or to the Lagos State uh, Blood Transfusion Committee and the committee will go to the hospital to make sure that that money is refunded or what? How would he get the money back? Yes, I, now, now if he makes the appropriate complaint, I think it will take time, but definitely. No, he has will. said that they have told him you're not getting your money back, that money is gone. So what is gonna be his next step? What should be his next step? What can he do? I think when certain things happen, I think uh, I will, he will report to? I mean, the hospital management. Okay. 
the hospital management. But, but doctor, how do you explain uh, the two callers who called to say that they paid for blood? If you say that they, the, what they paid is for the screening, one paid seven, the other one paid 4,500. 4, I think the issue on ground, what they normally ask them to pay and are respected for is 4,500. All right. Okay. But I'm also in the process where I used to explain to them uh, all those people, it depends on the condition in which the patient were. You know, they used to come. I worked in the general hospital Lagos, and we, when they come, I cancel them. Some were listening, and virtually all those people pass through me. The next one, they come back and they want to donate voluntarily. So that, you know, it's a matter of awareness which we are doing, and to let them know that it's not an issue. It's not being an issue at all. It's just an understanding of the process. And then we are here to explain to them and get them to know that this is what we do. What they paid for, just cover the process, processing of the blood for each unit. And it's even much more than that. Okay. So uh, the government has to subsidize the price to make sure at that level. Because we have investors who partners with the government to reduce the cost at that very particular level. Or if it's only to pay for that screening. All right, we have to close now. Um, what would be your final word, especially in the area of allaying the fears of Lagosians and Nigerians as a whole? What will be your final word to them to allay their fears? Because all of these things that's being said, oh, people get charged, oh, the blood gets sold, oh, we're not sure what happens to it. There are issues of suspicion that it could be used for fetish things. In one or two sentences, very quickly. I want them to know that it is safe to donate blood. And prevention is better and cheaper than cure. Okay. okay. Um, Your last our word. hero. hero. <laughs> well, my last word is um, <laughs> we should see it as a noble task. And we should see it as a tax to humanity. Like our uh, dim for the year that give the gift of life, donate blood. So when you donate a blood, every blood you need to donate, you are giving a gift of life to someone. You're saving lives. You're saving That's lives, yeah. what it's all about. And we've been speaking with uh, Dr. Samuel Allery, who is the assistant to the executive secretary, Lagos State Blood Transfusion Committee, and a hero of our time, Hero Shogo Alashunde, who is President Club 25, Lagos State Chapter, and District President-Elect, Leo District 404A1, Nigeria. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and Thank it's you great very to have much. you here. So, as it said, the theme for this year, give the gift of life, donate blood. Everyone should do it. Now we move on to the home stretch, but not until after we've had this break. Come and save your child Baby Earth is breathing and wailing And needs your sender embrace Mothers of the universe Mother Nature's guides Who come save your child Come save your child Come and take back your child This crazy world is breaking and burning And needs your strength right away Mothers of the universe Mother nature's guides Who take back your child Take back your child
Welcome back and guess who we have in the studio. You just saw her singing there. Do you remember who that is? Miata Fambule, the librarian known as Dee Dee. Dwayne mm. Diva. Mm. She's right here in the studio. <laughs> Welcome, Miata. Thank you, and it's good, good to be to here. Good to have you with us. Yes. Cool, that name goes back, way, way back. Back. When back. you were a hot, hot, hot <laughs> diva. Wait, I'm not hot anymore. <laughs> you are still very hot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a year and a half ago. We still, you know, but um, yes, we've gone on be beyond You're the hot slowing stage. down. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, it's good to have Miata with us in the studio. She was born in uh, Monrovia, Liberia, and she was educated in England, Sierra Leone, Kenya, and the United States. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, in the music scene of those days, I mean, she was one of the hottest African singers, along with um, Makiba. Yes. I mean, we're so honored to have you in the studio with oh, us this morning. Oh, come on. Na you know, I, I say Nigeria is my home away from home, so. Oh, well, we know you have loads of friends <laughs> in Nigeria. Now, tell us about how the whole music thing started for you. My grandmother used to take me to church. You know, she was part of this evangelical um, Aladura. Yes, every day this woman would go to vigil and stuff, and she would track me this with her. This is in Liberia. This is in Liberia. Okay. Yes, and uh, I loved the music. I must have been about five, six. You know, I couldn't understand anything they were talking. Not that I was even really interested, <laughs> uh, you know. But I loved the music, the harmony. And so I didn't object going to those services. So you actually just went there to enjoy the music? I did. I did. I have to be very <laughs> honest. Did Grandma sing? Um, not really. Grandma was more into... The dancing. You know, dancing <laughs> and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no singing in the family at all before oh no you no came no, no no that's there's plenty of singing in the family on both sides uh on my father's side i have i had an aunt who was like a celebrated singer in the rural area okay she came from the village traditional singer i met her years later because i didn't know of her and then on my mother's side uh, they've come out of this Episcopal uh, uh, denomination, and my mother was in the choir, mm. and my cousin played the keyboard. So yes, and and now, um, out of my siblings, like I have a brother in America, all his children sing, and yeah, it's part of the family now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, now how did you discover your talent? I didn't discover it. People just said, you can sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people know. discovered it for yeah, you. Yeah, they discovered it for me. And I will tell you something. Even after 40-something years, and I hear myself and I, and I watch tapes and things, I, I still ask, you know, can I really sing? I do ask that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, but in spite of asking that, uh -huh. you went ahead and sang. Yes, uh, it comes. It comes naturally. It, 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 it's easier. 
it's easy for me to do. And you know, I, I figure being a lawyer or a doctor, something serious like that, was just gonna be too tedious for my temperament. <laughs> Now, there was this uh, there, there was this story that's been told so many times that your parents did not really encourage you to sink. Yeah, well, back in the 60s, um, which, which parent wanted their child, daughter to sing? Wanted their daughter to sing, you know, uh, Daddy Dear was ambassador, Sierra Leone, Kenya, and, you know, spent his money in putting me in the best of schools. And then, and then uh, you decide to sing. Yeah, I and, mean, and all on. I wanted to really you can do, do better than sing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, what Ex happened to being a doctor? Yeah, that's that's it. You know, it, it, um, initially my family was like, "What? Did, where did we go wrong?" Exactly. With her? <laughs> <laughs> she wants to sing. Ah, but I think, luckily for me, um, Miriam Makeba had appeared on the stage, and for West Africa, we are from West Africa. Um, it was the first time an African woman, you know, came to the forefront and uh, so, you know, I could always use her as an argument, but that lady is singing and uh, yes, but she's, be too much wrong, yeah, but she's it? from South Africa. Oh, she's not <laughs> one of us. <laughs> she's not one of us. Okay, okay. But uh, I just, I just kept steady and I had a wonderful grandfather. My grandfather was like the head of our family maternal grandfather and they thought they were doing something they told him to give me a pep talk uh, yeah uh, and talk her out of it yeah? yes and talk to talk me out of it and I'll tell you he said to me don't oh, mind them <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact opposite <laughs> my grandfather did the exact he says you have a talent and it's a gift from God we didn't give it to you. You didn't find it yourself. So you're a very special person. And all I want you to do is always remember that this is God's gift. So you must use it to the best of your ability for your fellow man and blah, blah. Anyway, he was a lawyer as well. But that was it. And that pep talk was, uh, when, 1976 or so. So I never looked back. So when you look back now, in the 70s, um, you will not find a lot of young women no. in Liberia or anywhere in West Africa singing. Mm -hmm. Has a lot changed now, especially oh, yes. in Liberia? Oh yes, oh yes. The singers abound. The young uh, female singers are there. I'm very proud of them. I hear names every day. I see acts. And, and, but I always tell them, listen, you guys are lucky. You're lucky the attitudes have changed. Now focus on the art. Because a lot of times I see glamour, you know, glamour fame. or fame as the objective. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, they need to concentrate and pay attention to the development of their art. Now, when you sang that song, Oba, and you're thinking of womanhood, and you're thinking of motherhood, mm -hmm. would you say that that concept of womanhood, motherhood, that some of us grew up knowing that mother is supreme and all that, do you still see that in the true African sense <laughs> in our society now, especially uh, when you look at what some men yeah. do to women in our communities? Well, you know, first of all, uh, uh, Let's deal with the, the girls and the women. I don't know about Nigeria, but I think it's a phenomenon all over Africa now. Um, and in my country especially, uh, uh, we have a serious problem, uh, high rate of teenage pregnancy, uh, young girls who really are not fit to be mothers. And, and not fit in the sense of they're not developed enough, they're not mature enough. And um, the percentage of women now who, who want to be mothers, as I knew my mother and yours, it's not there anymore. And it's very worrying. So what do we begin to do? Because I, I checked online and I noticed that you've had quite a few mentoring sessions that you've done for librarian young men and women. Mm -hmm. What is it we need to begin to tell them? 
Because we, they will listen to someone like you because of your fame and what you've achieved in the music yeah. industry and outside of it. I talk, I, I, I talk to young girls and I talk to mothers. Uh, in Liberia, they have different categories of mothers. They say, baby ma. <laughs> that's the baby mother. <laughs> yeah, that's the baby's mother. She's never there. Mm -hmm. You know, she still wants to be going to the disco and stuff, leaving her children at home, etc. And tragedies happen in her absence and stuff. And then you have our ma, uh, meaning us, the older women who are trying to instill um, some kind of focus and discipline. As their grannies and aunties. And grannies mm. and aunties. And then, of course, you do have a percentage of young women who are true mothers even in combining their um, occupation mm. yes so uh, our society then if we wanted to evolve we need some more education for the young generation of mothers to come oh well, yes we do and uh, are we doing enough no as we, communities? we're not doing enough we're not What's doing stopping enough us? well what is stopping us is that, first of all, the media has been overtaken by a lot of foreign culture, a lot of foreign movies. Our kids are watching the movies, they're watching the videos, and uh, they want to think that that's the way it is. And I don't see enough of us um, countering it. I have to tell you, I, I fight with my Nigerian friends, my actor colleagues and actresses, because they hold a magic wand today on this continent. Um, the power of Nigerian movie is right across sub-Saharan Africa. Um, even you get to South Africa, and my South African's uh, girlfriends are saying, Chineke, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so much power, and yet, and yet, I'm seeing stories where every other young girl is trying to take somebody's husband, every mother is going to the juju man, so her daughter, you know, and, and I keep asking, where are these stories coming from? Are there no Other. true families? Are there no true uh, uh, people with values? Are there no mothers good who are... Stories can be good told. stories can be told. And, and we need to do that more, not to fall into the junk, as I call it. Not to fall into the junk if, we need, if we're going to give our people some kind of direction. Okay, uh, like I was just, I was listening to Coco Leoko yesterday, <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is a real dance tune from the 70s. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, what inspired that? And then the language, you, you kind of like mixed... I'm not, I'm not really sure because there were some words you used that I couldn't even Coco understand. Coco yes. Leo Coco. What does it mean? Now Creole with a talk. Where did cock the crow money? Early cock money. Coco mm -hmm. Leo For wake people. <laughs> uh -huh. That's what Coco Leo is. Early yes. morning, the cock is crowing. Mm. So in my mind, I just slipped the, the other little thing inside about making love because I found out... Um, Sorry? Yeah. I found out that <laughs> men... Wake up in the morning ready to make love. <laughs> yes. And so it's like, please, give, <laughs> yes, give me a break. <laughs> well, you know from whence we came now. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this is an ambassador's daughter. You see, <laughs> who decided, in spite of all the education all over the world, decided to be ah, a singer and an actress yes yeah. see? and yeah. now she's telling us about kokorio but he asked me now yes which words you didn't understand what we say chicken the crow for day yes that's pigeon mm -hmm. that's cool. yes chicken yes. the crow because money don't come yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and then what happens uh, uh. He they bug me, he say make we try uh, please uh, yes. excuse me <laughs> yes <laughs> my question is how did you how did you convince your father eventually mm -hmm. to accept that you were going to be a singer and there was no two ways about it i don't think i convinced him until i came out with my first album on emi in 1978 and there was a beautiful ballad that i did on that album it's called the lullaby and it's 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 a mother's lament for her stolen child in the crew dialect which is one of the 
uh, languages in Liberia. And I was in London. Yeah, because he had given up on me. Uh, you know, there was not much <laughs> communication there. So I did this beautiful album and everything, and I m sent it to him, especially. And I said, I want you to listen, listen to and then tell me what you think. Mm. And he did, and he called me back and said, mm, not bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, not That's bad. Different. And he said, um, I think your best performance was in the lullaby. Mm. And he said, so you should always try to stay within that feeling of your music. But that was the endorsement there. 1978, he finally accepted. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things I know that it will be unfair to conclude this interview without dwelling on is international media still refer to Liberia as a war-ravaged nation. It is. How do you feel and how do you think this can go on? Because you did mention just before we came on air that uh, you now live in Monrovia. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? How do I feel about living in Monrovia? No, no, about the fact that it's being a country that had so much to itself, but mm -hmm. unfortunately the war and the seasons and the periods of uh, uh, John Doe and uh, Taylor mm -hmm. and the execution mm -hmm. of Talbert and all that history. And where were you during the war anyway? Oh, I ran away first to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> then I came to Nigeria. And um, when I felt my brothers in West Africa through Echo Mark seem to have lost the direction I went to America. I came back from America in two or three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But on your question, it's war ravaged. It's war ravaged. And um, I guess when I'm talking to Nigerians, I have to say that 40 years after your own small war, or the Easterners will tell you their country is still ravaged. I saw that back in 1994, when I went to um, Aruchuku for the first time, uh, yes, um, for my brother Tom Onyadu's funeral. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, there were remnants of a war that had been fought. So if Nigeria, if the, quote, East has yet to recover after 40 years, it's going to take longer for Liberia. Is uh, uh, the Africa's first ever elected female president, is she doing enough? Is she succeeding as uh, president of Liberia? And that's uh, Salif Johnson. You know, um, I support Mrs. Salif because she's a woman. I want her to succeed. Is she doing enough? What can she do? What? You know, I, I sometimes I'm critical, but sometimes when I sit and think of the challenges of Liberia, you know, it's not just about putting the infrastructure. It's not just about fixing the roads. It's not just about these ideas of, um, you know, IMF, World Bank policies, etc. It's about a nation totally devastated. And, 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 Psyche. you know, it's, it's, it's scary when you sit to think about it. Uh, the Carter, Carter Center informed us Liberians last year that we have about 40% of people living with mental illness of, or on the verge as a result of the war. Mm. Yes. 40. 40%. I would even say, I would even say more. it's more than that. Because what people saw, what children saw, what young people were involved in, it's not something that's going to go away in 10 years. So we're dealing with all of these. Yes, um, some say Mrs. Selif is doing, uh, you know, what political leaders do, trying to balance it. Some of us say it is not enough. But then being there, seeing it on a daily basis, it's not going to be 
you know, nobody. It's not going to be enough. Mm. No. Okay, well, we will have to wrap up now, and we mm. do want you to sing us a song. Maybe you'll sing us Kokoriko. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Alera, over to you. Let's wrap up. You've been railroaded. <laughs> yeah? And been specifically, railroaded. specifically <laughs> Kokoriko? No, sing us a good song, but yeah, maybe Kokoriko. I like the Kokoriko. <laughs> no, but you know what? I've got this new one that I, I've written specifically um, for the leaders in Africa, etc. And uh, it's called the Big C. That's why I'm in Lagos okay, to begin we'll to... take that. After, 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 we've, well, after yes. we've shut down. Yes. Okay. Well, that's our package. We'll bring you a fresh one next Saturday. I'm Alero Edu My saying name. to you, have a happy weekend. I'm in, I'm in such a hurry to get to here, uh, Miata. So my name is Kadi Akintemi. It's great to have you this week, and we're looking forward to being back next week. So over to you. The big C is corruption. The big C is spreading everywhere. The big C is corruption. Corruption is killing you and me. You want some more? Yes. <laughs> you see, life has just got easier. You stay connected to Channels TV. We are news and innovations are shaping our world. Simple.